What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video, I'm going to use the extension SketchFX to create a split style effect in my model. And before we get started, I do want to take a second and thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon, as you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, you want to support what I'm doing, please check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. You can download this extension at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash sketch FX. I will note that I'm an affiliate for this extension, so if you do end up purchasing, I will receive a commission. Um, I believe there's a 30-day trial available through that link as well. So this model is a model from the building bundle from the guys over at uh, Mindsight Studios. I'll link to more info on that down below, but this would work just as well with any model in SketchUp, including anything from the 3D warehouse, that sort of thing. Um, but this is basically just an office building. It's a pretty nice model that's got glass, it'll do shadows, but I wanted to use that as kind of my example model for this video. And so what we're going to do is you have to have SketchFX installed on your computer, and I am not 100% sure, to be honest with you, I don't think it's updated for SketchUp 2018 yet. So for right now, I think you need to run this in the SketchUp 2017 version. Um, so the way that SketchFX works is it's basically got this one little uh, menu right here and when you click on it it's going to basically give you the option to apply effects to your model. And so you can see when I first do that it comes in here and applies a series of effects to your model. And one thing to note about this is it does get a little bit processor intensive. You can see as I fly around, even on my pretty fast computer, it does take a second to think and uh, update this view based on whatever my view is. So this is live updating. My recommendation would be if you have a slower computer to uncheck this box for auto update and then just use the refresh button up here. And you can see when I rotate around, it kind of locks to that image for some reason. And so the way that you can get around that is just tap the space Space key and that'll take you back out of it so you can rotate around so it's a little bit finicky in that way but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click the button for new project and so when I do that when I do new project what that's gonna do is that's gonna remove all of the effects that are in my effects list and SketchFX works a lot like Photoshop in the sense that it layers effects in here so like for example if I was to add if I click the add button and I added a style so let's say for example that I picked the wireframe style that would apply that style to this model and then if I was to come in here and I was to apply something else on top of it, like another style or a mask or anything like that, like let's say I added the artistic paint effect to this, that's going to get applied on top of that. And so what this does, and I realize that's not the best look, um, but what this does is this applies these effects from a top to bottom way. So it'll apply whatever's on top first and whatever's on the bottom last. So whatever's on the bottom of your list is going to be what's on top over here. And so the best way to learn SketchFX is actually to use the presets that are built in. That's the best way to kind of figure out the way things are working. And so there's a whole bunch of presets that you can access by clicking this change preset button and you can select any of these to apply those looks to your model. And if you uncheck the box for auto update, you just click refresh whenever you've selected a new preset. Um, but you can see how this effect, you, you can look at the different effects that are getting applied and kind of figure out the way that they work. Um, another note is I did do a couple tutorials for these guys actually that should be coming out pretty soon that kind of walk you through the way all of this works. Um, because I, in my opinion, it's a really cool extension. It's really powerful. Um, and uh, they're, they're working on their documentation so that people can kind of understand the way that everything works. But you can see how with all these presets, you can just kind of go through and kind of sort out what's going on with these. And another cool thing that this does is this also will like render model with ambient occlusion. If you have a license for that, that's their rendering program. So it's got some cool features, but the best way to figure this out is just to kind of mess around with the presets. Well, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this option for style split. And so when I click on style split, you can see that's a very simple effect that it's applying to this model. And it's basically taking a pencil style model it's taking a pencil style and it's masking it across this model so that it's only showing on the right hand side and so if you click on these you can see the different properties and the different settings and so like for example if I wanted to I could adjust this 
so that the center is elsewhere. So you can see how if I move the X and Y back and forth, then I can adjust where this goes, where this mask goes on my screen. And I can also adjust the size of it, and you can also adjust the angle. So if you wanted this to be kind of an angular effect, or even if you wanted it to be a top to bottom effect, you can adjust all of those different things with these little sliders in here. And again, that's just something you kind of have to play around with a little bit um, in order to figure out the way that it works. Um, but the nice thing about this is you can apply these styles to your model without having to learn how to use Photoshop. And so what we're going to do is right now, I kind of I like what it's doing with this. We're going to add another style up above this though. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the plus button and we're going to go down to style and we're going to click OK. And then you can see there's a drop down down here that asks you to select a default style. So you can select other like custom styles that you've created as well. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the chipboard style. And so you can see that kind of applied this to this model. But what happened is the opacity of this is set to um, 0.5 so what that means is you can see through it which means the effect isn't quite as strong so if I was to click and drag this over since this is at the bottom this is actually going to go over the entire um, other style and so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this so I'm gonna name this chipboard style and then on this other one I'm gonna name it sketchy edges style and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chipboard style and I'm going to move it up so that it's underneath my model. And so now you can see how I'm getting a little bit of the chipboard style in the back, but I'm also getting this other sketchy edges style. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to change my mask back to what it was originally. So I believe this was in here at 90 degrees, so that's going to do a left to right in this object. But then you can see what this is doing as I kind of like rotate around and zoom in is now I have my chipboard style on the left hand side. It's got kind of the chipboard effect. And then this linear mask, which you can see is indented a little bit. And so you can tell this is a child of the sketchy edges style because it's indented underneath the style name. And so basically what that means when something's indented is it means that it's a child of an object and it's only affecting the object directly above it, not the entire model. And so now what you have is you have this split screen effect where you have one effect over here and one effect over here. And just uh, for the sake of what we're doing here, let's change this to, let's see if we can find like a blueprint style. I know there's a blueprint style built in here. Let's see if we can find it. I don't think generic CAD is really what we want. Oh, there we go, blueprint. So now you can see what this is doing is this is taking this chipboard style first and applying it to the entire model. And then it's masking this, um, this blueprint style over top of it. So I'm gonna change this to blueprint because you can rename these. So if I turn this blueprint style off by clicking on this little eye, you can see how all we have is just the chipboard style being applied to our model. But then if we turn the blueprint style back on, then now we're masking that blueprint style across the model. That's how you would create a style split in your model. And what I'm going to do, just for the sake of uh, just for the sake of uh, an example, is I'm going to remove that linear mask, and instead I'm going to bring in a radial mask and click OK. And so when I do a radial mask, you can see what it's doing is it's creating a circular mask in this model instead of a linear one. And so then you can take that and like let's say I wanted the upper right hand corner to be this one style. I could change the X and Y of it until it's centered on the area where I want the other style to be. And so like for example, you can adjust the radius of it as well. So if I wanted to make it smaller, I could adjust this radius style down a little bit so you could really focus on something with your other style. And then the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you can actually invert that mask. So now instead of having that style over here, 
you're inverting it and telling it in this space I want this blueprint style to be not the chipboard style so you can check that box in order to invert that so once you start getting kind of an idea of the way all of this works it's a really powerful way to add effects to your model without having to go into Photoshop or relearn anything or anything like that so I'm really excited for uh, some of the cool stuff that you can do with this that's where we're gonna end today's video leave a comment below let me know what you thought is this something you're interested in do you like this extension do you have some cool ideas for what you could do with it I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.